Leslie Durr, and I am the project manager for the Chicago Health Atlas at the City Tech Collaborative uh, in Chicago, formerly of Smart Chicago Collaborative of Chicago. Uh, we joined with City Digital about a year ago and formed uh, the City Tech Collaborative. And I have to my right uh, my subject matter experts tonight. So once I take my seat, you guys can pick their brains about all the things I know you want to know about the Chicago Health Atlas. Um, this is Kingsley Weaver, epidemiologist from the City of Chicago Public Health Department. Can we give Kingsley a hand, please? She can answer your questions about all the data. And to her right is Katie Franzen, again from Clarity Partners, who is um, our partner in development of this project in this phase of the project. And I say this phase because this is about the third iteration of the Chicago Health Atlas. Is anybody in the room familiar with the Atlas at all? Okay, well, awesome. It's gonna be a, a refreshing update for those of you who don't know about the Atlas, and I think it'll be exciting for you guys to get to know the Atlas because we are working to push traffic through there so that you can use this tool in your daily work. Oh, it's sensitive. It's sensitive. So a little, about, a little bit about City Tech Collaborative. Uh, what we do is help cities reinvent themselves, and we help them uh, transform some of the problems that face larger cities that they cannot um, solve on their own. And we do that by using the city of Chicago as a test bed for those uh, solutions. Um, we work with partners and we design solutions from pilot to scale. And we uh, certainly believe that we are increasing uh, the urban community's odds of solving some of the problems that exist in, in urban cities. Uh, we work with companies such as Microsoft, uh, HVK, we work with universities as well as the city to identify uh, problems that we can come together and develop a pilot around. One of our favorite pilots is what we call the Cubs pilot. What it is is a pilot to reduce congestion around uh, Cubs games in the evening. And so we work with uh, CTA, we work with the Cubs organization, we worked with the Ventra organization to figure out a way we could incentivize um, the residents to travel at off-peak hours. What we were trying to do is reduce the amount of trains and buses that CTA had to deploy because that wasn't really getting the job done and it also wasn't saving any money. Um, so we devised a pilot where you could get a text message that says, hey, it's a Cubs game tonight, go have dinner or go home early. Don't be caught up in that traffic in between. You could opt in for, for that, or you could opt in to get a free ride credited to your Ventra card, or you could get the amount of a free ride donated to a charity of your choice. We, did, we ran that pilot over two night games um, last summer, and we actually saw a change in, in ridership activity by about 17%, which is pretty good for a pilot of that size. And so most of the people that responded uh, to the pilot, of course, prefer that they get the free Ventra ride. Uh, credited back to their account. So we do pilots and projects like that to help cities try to figure out some of the problems that they're facing. We also do work in water, waste management, infrastructure. So all of the, the pilots that we do would be structured around kind of that organization. A, a, the city, a corporate organization, and other partners that want to come in and work on those problems. Now the Health Atlas is a little bit different. Um, the Health Atlas was originally developed in early 2012, well, 2013, with the generous support of the old soul S.A. Sprague Memorial Institute. Um, it debuted as the number one source and repository for the health data for the city of Chicago from CDPH. At that time, it displayed huge amounts of data so that you could take action to improve your own health. Um, it also has data on all of the hospitals in the city of Chicago and the hospital pages. In 2016, we went into the second iteration where we added new data sets to the Atlas um, and made the demographic and population health data available by hospital service area, which is just a little different than just having the hospital's information up there. Then we went on to add 75 indicators from the Healthy Chicago 2.0 plan. Anybody heard of that before, Healthy Chicago 2.0? That is the plan by which the health department is gauging how we're doing becoming a healthier city. 
So those indicators were, were added to the, the Atlas for Public Display. <laughs> then in 2017, we did a little bit of reimagination because before it was just kind of flat, it was all numbers, it was ugly, it had no pictures. So we, we rebranded it a little bit, reimagined it, so it would pop a little bit and make people want to come and visit the site. So this is just the landing page. And then we added the remainder of the Healthy Chicago 2.0 indicators. I think there are 165. No, that's how many indicators are on the Health Atlas itself. There's like 80 uh, uh, Healthy Chicago 2.0 indicators. Okay. On there now where you can that has been visualized in a way that's easier to see, easier to digest, so we're very excited about that. And that's what you're gonna to get to see a little bit of a demo about tonight, because um, Kingsley is gonna do a live demo for you. All right. So as Leslie mentioned, um, the City of Chicago, Department of Public Health, and um, what's called the Healthy Chicago Partnership got together and um, tried to identify a lot of the major issues facing the people of Chicago. Um, health. It, health issues, but also um, social determinants of health, trying to get at some root causes. And from that developed a plan to track indicators, and that's what you refer to as Healthy Chicago 2.0. So that wanting a dashboard so that we could track these indicators was part of what was the impetus for us to update the Chicago Health Atlas. And so we do have, um, on the home page, we have a dashboard for the um, Healthy Chicago 2.0 indicators. Right now it's still somewhat static. We would like it to be updated automatically as we receive new data. We have to manually update it, but there's always room for improvement. And so we have a list of things that we're working on. Um, but when you're in here, you can see the indicator baseline data. We, if we've identified a priority population to uh, address, um, baseline for the priority population, the 2020 target, and um, a link to the data source. So for example, I'm gonna show life expectancy um, you can just click through when you're in the dashboard. Um, life expectancy is uh, the average number of years a person may expect to live. Um, and so we provide data at a citywide level and when available for various subgroups. So for life expectancy, for example, you can see uh, race, ethnicity, gender, and um, economic hardship, which is a composite index of six um, socioeconomic census indicators. Um, it's also many indicators when it, um, when possible we make them available at the community area level um, and so then you can also scroll through and look at uh, different community areas we've provided disparities for those subgroups so you can see in um, chart graphs um, different disparities and um, oh, and you can scroll down for different years and also trends over time uh, when available We do provide the data for download um, by clicking on this button. It will download as an Excel spreadsheet. I won't make you save that to your computer. But it'll download as an Excel spreadsheet. It is aggregate data. We are not providing line level data. But that then allows you to make your own visualizations um, or whatever you'd like to do. Uh, so there are a couple of different ways to search for indicators when you're in, on the Atlas. One is to go over to this indicators tab. Um, this is a list of all of the indicators that are available on the Atlas. Um, and then you can just search in here. Um, it's not a smart search, so you do have to search for what you're looking for. For example, if you're looking for um, tobacco-related information, search for tobacco, you won't find anything. Smoking, you will, it will bring up youth and adult smoking. Uh, so I'm going to go to avoidable ED visits. We have many different data sets. Uh, some of them are publicly available, like census data, and we do use some portal, uh, Chicago data portal data. Some of our data comes from Illinois Department of Public Health uh, Vital Statistics Department. This is, um, we have hospital discharge data that comes from the Illinois Hospital Association via Illinois Department of Public Health for us. Um, this is an example of a data set that is not available at the community area level. We receive these data at zip code level. So um, similar to the community areas, however, we do provide zip code level data when it's available. Um, and you can do, uh, we do also have a print option um, so that you can print um, the graphs if you want. 
Um, so another, I mentioned there are a few different ways to search within the atlas. Another option is to go up to this bar. And um, uh, one thing I want to point out for the community area level data, uh, for citywide data, we are able to do single year because there are, the population is large enough that we don't have to suppress rates. For community areas, we start to get into lower numbers, and so we combine years. And so you'll see on the community area pages, there are aggregate years. Oh. Here, what I wanted to show you, though, is that we do also have an API. Um, so if you click on the little API button, you can also hook into the API. Please don't ask me questions about that. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> Another source that we have on the Health Atlas is um, called the Healthy Chicago Survey. Um, this is a survey that is done by the Chicago Department of Public Health every year. Um, and so what we really love about this is that it enables us to um, change the questions that we're asking to be um, very dynamic and address any um, new issues that might come up over time. Uh, it is a survey of Chicago adults aged 18 and over. Um, and uh, we, a lot of the indicators that are Healthy Chicago indicators and um, on the Atlas are Healthy Chicago survey. We use Healthy Chicago a lot, and so <laughs> it can be kind of confusing, all these different Healthy Chicago things. Um, so I'm just making a note of that. So here for the community, this, the, so this is Healthy Chicago um, survey data. Um, in the understanding the measure, it does have some detail about um, these data are weighted to be representative of the population, and so we try to be very transparent about um, what the data are showing. Um, but this is an example where there are some um, low numbers. Uh, currently, the way that this is um, displayed is with uh, a little red asterisk, and you can click on the Learn More page, or a Learn More little um, button and it will bring you to what is actually the About page, which you can also access from up here. But um, at the bottom of the About page, we have some information about the various data sources, and we do have some data suppression and reliability text. Uh, there will at times uh, be dash marks. That means that the data are fully suppressed. The little asterisk actually means that it's flagged, so just interpret the estimates with caution. One of the things that's really exciting about the Healthy Chicago survey is that when we get three years of data together, we can uh, look at community area level estimates, um, which I showed from the front page, but then we can put it on a map. Um, and so if you're looking at a map and you're interested in a particular community area, you can um, click on that community area. We really like Hedgewich. <laughs> Uh, so then that brings you to the community area page. There is some uh, general um, census demographic information for that community area. Um, but then you can also pull down uh, community area specific information. Um, it'll give you the community area estimate next to the um, city estimate for any indicator those data are available for. Okay, and once you're in here, if you see an, an indicator that you think is interesting, you can click on it, and it'll take you to that indicator, and you start the process all over again. Um, okay, and then the last thing I want to show, uh, so another way to get to the community area page, if you're interested, um, is this little community area button up at the top, and so that lists all the community areas, and you can look for a specific one. We also provide um, those information, uh, similar information for zip codes. Um, not the census information and um, the data sets that are available at the zip code level are limited, but, um, oh, yep, there are some. But you will find some buried in there. Um, the resources page is the last thing I'm gonna talk about. Uh, these data are provided by Maps Corps. Um, and so if you're interested in a community area here, you can just select your community area. Uh, currently, they're mainly, uh, all the community areas that Maps Corps covers are pretty much from like North Avenue South. There are a few that are north of North Avenue. So not every single community area has resource data at, the to at this time, but you can, for example, look in Pullman, it'll bring you down, you can zoom in, you can select different uh, topics that you might be interested in, like education, um, you can drill down. Currently, yeah. the resource data is available for, for 55 of the 77 communities in Chicago with plans to complete 
that uh, data mapping for those resources. I've never done that before. That's pretty exciting. Um, yes, thank you, Leslie. I always forget exactly the number. Um, okay. And then, uh, as I mentioned, there is the About page, and then you can also access that API from the little tab at the top. Thanks. Now I'll <laughs> hand it over to Katie. Thank you. Thank you. I am not going to talk too long. I just wanted to show for the developer community, really the, the, one of the best things I think about the Atlas, besides just having all this transparent data, is the ability to pull APIs from the app itself. So the um, Health Atlas API page, we have sort of beefed this up a little bit. And we are, I think, open to enhancements across the board for the application. So if there's things that the developer community is looking for, these are things that I think City Tech and CDPH are very open to understanding how is this functioning for you, what would make it easier for you. But the Atlas it, or the API page is one thing that we've been focusing on recently. Um, so one thing I wanted to just show you is that there are um, specific parameters for the APIs. But one thing that's really cool, if you're looking for just the geography, even if you're not interested in health data, but you have an application that you'd like to have the boundaries for all 77 community areas in Chicago, this application actually has an API that will give you that list of coordinates. So you don't actually have to go in and map the coordinates yourself. You can pull that API and use it in your app, even if your app has nothing to do with health data. So there might be some value in this API page that um, could be something of interest to a lot of different types of applications. Um, you'll notice here too, some of these have uh, parameters that you have to basically go get from the indicator page that you're looking at. So the end of the URL on any indicator page is what we call the indicator slug. And you'll see some of these parameters require you to type in the indicator slug. You just go get the, the year that you're interested in and the, the last piece of the URL of that indicator page, and you can pop that into any of the API uh, parameters here. Uh, you can also test it and see how it returns. So if you have the right indicator slug and you pop that into this test, you can run and see the JSON that would be coming out of there. So some really kind of interesting things if you're looking for specific indicator data, geography data, hospital data, the resources data, you can also find um, not the API necessarily, but you can find a lot of the resources on that resources page. So some really interesting things happening here on the developer level. If you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to City Tech or CDPH. Um, Clarity Partners has been working on this since last June, and we have a long list of things that obviously could be enhanced or features that we would like to beef up a little bit. Um, but if the developer community has specific asks or requests or things that you guys think would make this better, I know City Tech is very open to feedback, and I know CDPH loves to hear you know, new data ideas. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for making all this data available. Um, what do you hope people will do with it? Um, broad question, but what sorts of categories of things? Um, well, a big, uh, a lot of what we went into choosing indicators with is um, items that we get a lot of data requests for. And so um, people who are looking at doing grants or students, these were data items that people would often like call us up and, or email us and ask for. So we tried to make it very easy, like a lot of the more common things, that um, data points that people are interested in. But, you know, the sky's the limit. I mean, we are hoping, one of the enhancements we'd like to make is um, doing more data dashboards. As it is, you can only look at an individual um, component, but we know that health um, is composed of a lot of different things. I mean, I, I mentioned the social determinants of health and health outcomes. So being able to look at multiple things at one time, I think would also be really beneficial. And then also layering on some like community assets and um, stuff like that. And so uh, hopefully for planning, if, um, you know, a some places looking to open a clinic, well, where is the greatest need? Um, I think would be ideal situations as well. Hi, I've been following this ever since about 2012. Uh, do you have any plans or is there built into the site some sort of community interaction uh, so that uh, people could be talking to each other uh, about what they're finding on the site, how they're using the site and, and learn from that? 
So we don't have anything kind of like a, like a chat room so people can go in there and say, hey, I found a daycare over on the east side or if you take a look at these asthma rates over here, that might explain why your kid is coughing all the time. Um, so we hadn't really fully considered sort of a communication option yet, but it's certainly worth um, taking a look at. Why do you think that would be important? There's so many problems in Chicago that you're showing on the map. Uh, but unless people are pulling that out and telling stories, uh, using the data in ways that get more people involved, uh, raise resources, change political will, then it, in my mind it's underutilized. Uh, but for that to happen, I think it has to be encouraged. And as you see people using it well, you need to really shout, look at them, and you can do it too. Now that is something that we are doing. We are reaching out to folks, asking them, how are you using the Atlas? So we can bring that storytelling out to the forefront so people can see, yes, we are using it for exactly that. And yes, this is what we found when we used it. So we can take that story out into the general public, out to the philanthropic public, to let them know this is a valuable tool worth using. What are some limitations of this data or common warnings that you would give to people working with it? Or can you share a story of when the data suggested something that your subject matter expertise differed from? Um, I don't really have any stories uh, about where the data kind of differed from our subject matter expertise. Um, it has been incredibly challenging, though, kind of wrangling all of these data. Um, as I mentioned, our Healthy Chicago survey is a um, survey that gets weighted. Well, that's different from our vital statistics or our surveillance data, so it has different um, standards that we use in order to define what um, can, should and should not be reported as far as suppressing of numbers and data and stuff. And so we are still working to try and come up with um, standardization around, for these type of data, you know, counts less than five, we are going to suppress. But some of that is arbitrary. Some of it is actually a biostatistical calculation as to whether or not something is um, how stable a rate is. Uh, but just trying to come up with those and put them down on paper so that everybody is using the same standards has been a bit of a challenge. But we, um, I mean, if anybody is looking and you notice like, oh, I was using this and it's actually not very clear from the understanding the measures, um, what these data are telling us, then I think that that's also valuable feedback. Anytime you're enmeshed in data, there are nuances that you take for granted that other fresh eyes uh, would definitely be able to help with. And so um, we're also totally open to feedback. Really quickly about the feedback, if you're interested, if you're, I recommend everybody just check out the indicators page because I was surprised when I was working on the application, just the breadth of indicator topics. So there's traffic information, there is school information, education information, immigration information. There's all sorts of different topics. It's not just the chronic disease that a lot of people like to associate with public health. And I think that was something that I was really surprised. I mean, adult binge drinking, there's all sorts of different things on there that might be applicable to different applications where you're not necessarily thinking, oh, I'm building a health app. It might be something that this has data that you can use and the CDPH um, group has been vetting it and making sure that it's the real data that you should be looking at. Um, one other thing I just wanted to point really quickly to is there's a contact us section on the about page. So if you are scrolling through there and you are really finding some interesting things, but you want to say, hey, I noticed that this wasn't there, or do you have any more recent data? Um, or this is how I used the app, and I found it very useful for this reason. Um, you can email the Healthy Chicago 2.0 at cityofchicago.org and just make sure that that feedback gets back to the people in charge of the decisions. Thank you. Uh, how can the Chicago Health Atlas serve as a template for other cities that are looking to aggregate their data in similar ways? Well, we've been in contact with a couple of cities, and I think that Chicago is unique in the fact that we have the Illinois Department of Public Health, we have a County Department of Public Health, we have the City Department of Public Health, who have agreed to work together um, to, to aggregate this data and make it publicly available. And I think that's the biggest key, is the collaboration between those health departments and the willingness of the other departments to share that information and for the City of Chicago to be transparent. Um, I think that 
our atlas is as vital as it is, is because of the makeup of our city and our demographics. So other cities' atlases um, wouldn't be exactly like ours. I've seen a few, um, but most of them have not agreed to make as much of their public health data uh, accessible and open as we have here in Chicago, I think. Yeah, New York has um, a couple of different dashboards. Of course, New York does everything. Uh, but they, uh, and some of that was actually um, inspiration for us to um, upgrade the Atlas when, um, in 2016. But uh, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has also now done the 500 Cities Project. Um, and so that has city level data and um, there's also the city health dashboards. And so there are other organizations that aren't even local governments that are trying to do this kind of broad based across the country um, to allow cities to be compared to one another. And the community level data I think is specific to us. Yeah, and the community area level data. Robert Wood Johnson does some, uh, I don't know, really fancy math to do these really small area estimates. But um, our data are kind of less funny math. <laughs> More robust. Awesome. Give it up for our speakers again.